long time ago, when, and they probably still do in the black churches when they're growing up, they always said, uh, pray my strength in the Lord. Pray my strength in the Lord. Okay, as a kid you wonder, what are they saying? What are they talking about? Our spirits calls out to God and we need strength no matter where we're going, what we got to do, we got, all, we got work to do. We got a job to do. No matter what our job is or what he has appointed to us for that moment, we need his strength. And we talked last week about the joy of the Lord is our strength. It comes directly from God. Whether it's physical, emotional, or spiritual strength that we need. We need God to give us strength in many areas. Sometimes I even ask Lord, I can say it when my husband's here, that my <laughs> Lord help me with my husband. <laughs> give me strength. <laughs> or even my kids or different ones that try to come up against you, you know, Lord, just carry me through. We are interconnected body, spirit, and soul. And that spirit man needs a, a, an abundance of strength to deal with other parts. It all goes together and what life may throw away. The scripture says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. It is through God that we get the strength of the Lord. We all need others sometimes to give us a boost of encouragement. It seems to help us to get the strength to go on. Sometimes if you've got somebody knowing that they're praying for you, knowing that they're, they're behind you, uh, and knowing that they're helping you, they're encouraging you when you need the help, that you can go to them. It just l helps you to go on one more time. Helps you to give that encouragement. I notice even more so as I'm getting o we're getting older that, Lord, we need that physical strength too sometimes to go on. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 11, that we were to encourage one another and build each other up. And then in Hebrews 3, 13, he also says to encourage others in the faith because Otherwise, they'll fall back into sin. He says, keep encouraging them. There's people I know that have gone back in sin because somebody failed to encourage them or somebody f f fell down on their job or whatever they needed to do to keep them going. We need the encouragement of the Lord and encourage one another and help one another. We're brothers and sisters in this work. We're in the kingdom working together for the same purpose against the same devil. And I don't mean working with other false religions, like so many, that, what is really coming out there. The false religions of the Muslims and the Catholics and everything else that were serving the same God. That ain't what I'm talking about. That's not true unity because the Lord says you cannot have unity with the unbeliever or someone that is of a diff the strong faith. He even told the Israelites to stay, quit, don't get mixed with the false doctrines. Don't get fit, mixed with those that serve idols. In, in the last few weeks, I've been, even last night, I happened to run across a minister on TV talking about some things that some of this was going on way back in 1980s and 90s already set up like that. And some of the preachers back then that had signed up to this. I thought, wow. <laughs> you know, I knew it happened. It's been going on. But we're to be helping one another in unity, the one that's actually doing the work that Jesus told us to do. He gave us a work to do, to go out and win souls and to encourage others and lift up one another and love one another. We need to get stronger in God, God, whether new Christian or old saint. We can grow and get strength in that Lord, in our Lord. We need that. I've had to ask God many times, Lord, give me strength to do something I knew he wanted me to do. And sometimes he didn't tell me what it was till I got to some place. He just says, go. And I knew there was a, a job when he tells you, go. But Lord, give me strength, and Lord, you better work on my spirit, man, because I'm not really ready to do this. But God always comes through. David many times asked God for strength and knew where his strength came from. It came from the Lord. The first verses here in Psalms 
26, 6 through 8. He said, David was saying, Blessed be the Lord because he has heard my voice, the voice of my supplication. Because if you cry out to the Lord, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart exalts and with my song I shall thank him. The Lord is their strength and he is a saving defense to his anointed. Not everybody's anointed. Not every preacher, not every pastor is anointed and appointed by God. But he, if you're doing what he said you do, if he gave, appointed you, if he, you're doing his work of winning souls, doing what he asked you to do, you are anointed by God because you're doing what he told you to do. But I use David a lot in my preaching because he, he was such a worshiper. I love worship. But he, he went through so many things. But he says, I know where my strength comes from. He even said in... In uh, Psalms 121, that to look, uh, I look under the hill. See, when they weren't, uh, back in those days, they, did, they didn't have a church on every corner, as we say, or nearby each other. They would have to travel miles and days to get to their temples, unless they had it at home. But when they could not go to their temples, and they were appointed to go at least once a year. But when they couldn't go, they were off in the villages, and he said, when they couldn't go to the temple, all they do is if they needed God, they would have to look to Mount Zion. They would face towards Mount Zion and know that's where God dwells. That's why the, the thing in Israel about the mountain and the Mount of God that they're trying to split is so important. It's not Israel's uh, location. It's not Arab's location, it's not America's location, it's God's. It belongs to God. Jerusalem is God's city. It don't belong to nobody but God. You don't mess with what God has. Right, this next scripture is in Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. He would grant you, he grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit. In the inner man, we need to be strengthened in that inner man. So Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, length, and height, and depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. These scriptures is talking about getting strength from God and where our strength comes from. But there were some purposes for it when we dwell in him. And these scriptures give you steps to get spiritually strong and the reason why you need that strength. The first one he was talking about is to get that Holy Ghost and its power because it gives you strength. It says the power through the Holy Spirit, through the Spirit. He says, that's what gives the power. Even Jesus says, when he left, he says, I will give you another comforter that you will know, you'll have power to tread upon serpents. You'll have power to do the work of God. Then he says, then we need to be rooted and grounded in the love and faith of God. Be so rooted and grounded in Christ and who he is and what he done and what the scripture has to say. Because when you're so rooted and grounded and you're strong, just like Jesus said with the, uh, the parable of the house and the storm, when you're rooted and grounded on strong ground, that when the storms of life or when people try to knock you down and people, and I know mostly Christians and church people try to knock me down. That's a sad fair. They're supposed to be encouraging you, loving you, helping you. And they try to knock you down. But when the enemy uses somebody to try to knock you down, you can be so strong. And like I was thinking last night, we were talking about that you can be so strong and so, I don't care. I'm going to stand and I'm going to live, lift my light high. I'm not going to let nothing knock me over. I'm not going to let it get me down. 
That's the kind of strength he wants. He wants you, just like a soldier, that you go into battle, that you can, what is it? We were saying there's a scripture that says that you will jump over a troop, go through a troop and jump over a wall. That kind of strength, that powerful strength in the Lord. To let nothing hinder you. Let nothing keep you and discourage you. Because the enemy will sure try. He will sure try. Then it says, then we can be, we can, after we get strong in him and have that Holy Spirit living in us, then we'll be able to comprehend all the things of God. Comprehend everything. Not just what was written, but comprehend what he's really saying in the third heavens. What he's really telling us. Because the Bible can be interpreted literally or spiritually. Or he's trying to say something through numbers, through whatever scriptures, through colors, through whatever. Just like he speaks out many different ways. And you get so full of the Lord has for your life and know things in the spiritual realm that the natural man cannot even comprehend. And I can tell you for sure, not even pastors will comprehend some of the things God does through me. Like I wrote in my book, it's going to help you to get strong, then you'll be able to see angels, be able to experience and know in the spiritual realm, like the sister was telling me a couple of weeks ago, that I always knew and I felt exactly what God is thinking sometimes, and it's frustrating when you get into places that, Lord... I don't want to be here anymore. You know, you feel them, their spirits. You feel their thinking. That I know what God's thinking. You get to get so close to God. You get to know what he's saying. Moses did. Joshua did. Elijah did. Many of the prophets, many of the people knew what God was like. And Jesus says, I am doing as my father does so he wants us to be growing in him and strong in him so much that we don't go anywhere we don't speak anything we don't do anything unless god approves it because jesus says i'm going to do as my father tells me only what he says to do so we need to be like jesus and do what he does and you can't do that if you're not strong in him and you have to have that strength and power and strength in him and being strong in him and knowing your word. You can't hear his voice because you don't understand what, you can't quite comprehend everything. And you will truly experience God in the spiritual things. You'll see miracles and angels and manifestations like we've already seen here in this churches, this church so far. And I've seen twice this week my angel in two different ways. Okay. You know, and even the angel healed my shoulder a couple of weeks ago. God knows what he's doing. When you get so full of God's presence and his fullness and see and experience spiritual things, you will feel like nothing can stop you, as I was saying. I mean, you, may not, you may even feel like you can say, devil, come on and show me what you got. You're not afraid of the enemy. See, God had showed me a long time ago you need to be so full of him he, th and to be close to him. Uh, see, I had a, he was not a brother-in-law at the time, but he be got, became a brother-in-law after this incident. He came to our house for Thanksgiving with my sister, and he was probably about six, five, six, eight tall, big, huge, hawking man, but... God showed me the 12 demons he had. And the top one was pride. The Lord showed me something. I didn't have to do it. But he says, we can be strong enough in the Lord that we can speak to that demon, that huge guy, and I'm a little woman next to him, you might say. I'm like a, I felt like a little, <laughs> little imp there. But you can stand up the enemy that's in him and tell him to physically in his body to sit down and shut up and he has to obey. We have that ability. We get strong. We can have ability to speak under the speak life. We can speak death. We can speak uh, whatever God expects us to speak. And like that scripture we know so well in Philippians 4:13, the regular version says, "I can do all things through Christ who gives you strength." It's through Christ, through His power, not of our physical abilities, not. 
and I, I even tell my husband and that a lot of things in the spiritual realm, it's not, it, men have a way of, because they want to be so independent and they're built, their, their mindset to think things out and try to figure things out. But it's through Christ. It's through God that you do everything. Everything you experience. And I'm going to put up the amplified version. He says, I have strength for all things in Christ. Not strength to do what we want to do and do sin, and to do what the world would expect of us and what our friends want of us, but what God expects of us. We have that strength. Who empowers me, I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. That fully entails everything that you're strong, nothing can knock you over, that you're able to do whatever he says do. You're able to speak many things. You're able to talk to many things. You're able to do the work that he's called you to do. You're able to do mentoring and, and uh, discipling and whatever. Because not in your own ability sometimes can you do some of those things. You can sure give up sometimes. You can, but it's through Christ. When he appoints you to do something, you can do it through him, not any other way. You can do it through him. I'm going to go through some points and read some scriptures of how can we grow and get strength. What to do to get stronger. We talked about getting stronger. We talked about it's through Christ. We can be, have that ability. You, you, now you get the idea that we're gonna, you can do uh, anything that God has for you to do. You can be strong warriors. You can do whatever he wants. Some of this is the same thing, uh, information for people that need to grow in the Lord. The first thing is to get the milk of the word. 1 Peter 2.2, 2, like newborn babies, long for the pure milk of the word so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. Now some of us may be past the milk of the word and into the meat, but it says, notice that word says, long for the pure milk. That means what it really is saying. Sometimes we can see words on a page and it feels good, and it sounds good, and it does something, but to, oh, wow, when it does something that you never experienced before. There's some scriptures sometimes I read, and I thought, oh, my goodness, I've read this so many times, and yet I'm ready to shout because it's something good, that pure milk, that pure things that will give you real power and strength. The next one is to listen to leaders and people of God. By listening to the word, hearing what the scripture says, you get faith by the hearing of the word. It gives you strength in the faith. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. And he gave some apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the service, to the building up of the body of Christ. The building up of the body of Christ. That means giving them strength, showing them where they need to go, showing them what needs to be done. Until we all obtain, attain to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the statue which belongs to the fullness of Christ, to get to where you become perfect. Now, people say you can't be perfect, but Scripture says be perfect because I am perfect. That doesn't mean the word is we know it. It means to become mature like Christ. Go up. Be all that you can be. What do they say? Be all you can be in the army. You know, that, that not it the army that says that? We can grow up and be completely full of him. Completely full of strength, joy, peace, and all the fruits of the spirit. And as a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men for craftiness and deceitful scheming. And you can see that happening. I see it so much on Facebook. I see it so much in the churches that they can be so deceived and be pulled under by the big lie of the homosexual. They can be pulled under about the, the, the abortion. They can be pulled together about 
that hyper grace that we don't need to repent. They can be pulled under by these big preachers, and then I can name you a bunch of them that are on TV, the big name preachers. I see all the time people speaking about them, saying they enjoy him. When they're speaking enemy lies, there's many, I can give you a list, that are speaking lies from the devil, that are speaking false doctrine. Because the scripture says in the end we'll have false teachers, false doctrines, false te- people, speakers, preachers. And we won't be tricked by them because we're strong in the faith. We know what God's thinking. We know what the word says. But speaking the truth in love, not only knowing and understanding and discerning, but we're going to be able to come against it. Able to speak the truth in faith and love. We're to grow up in aspe- all aspects of him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of one itself in love. See, we're all in a ch- the body of Christ, for working for the kingdom. So we need to be built up. And we listen to our leaders. Even I have to listen to leaders. I have to listen to my own leader sometimes if he was to correct me. But I'm going to do what, because he is my leader, because he's an apostle. All right, the next thing we know in Ephesians, and I won't read that scripture, but it's well known what that scripture is. Ephesians 6. We need to put on that armor. That's getting strong. You cannot fight the devil unless you've got some of this armor on. And I don't have time to go in to explain all the parts of it. But I will at least list them. We need to put on the girdle of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel shoes, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. They all have their duties and their parts in the work of the kingdom. You can't just use one. You have to have all of them to do the work. If you're missing one part, the enemy will shoot you in that spot. And it ain't fun. So we need to put on that armor. Get strong and put on that armor. We can stand, like the scripture says, to stand against the wiles of the enemy, against all principalities and all powers and everything that the enemy has. And we definitely need to get into prayer. It says to pray without ceasing in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. But this is Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing in, in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Sometimes you have to wait on your knees before God, and I have to do that many times with having, being a pastor here to, Lord, you got to give me something. What am I going to (laughs) do? You know, sometimes it's till the next last minute here, but God knows it always works out. He will give you strength to do whatever he called you to do. He don't tell you to do something unless he knows you can handle it. But sometimes we have to, he might give us the instructions, he might give us the job because he knows we can do it, but then we have to get something through the word, through these different methods of getting stronger in him so we can do what he told us to do and helps us to go forward. Then he, the scriptures in Galatians says to stand fast, Lord, stand fast, don't give up, stand strong because this is freedom, God Jesus came to bring us freedom. We're not to go back against into slavery of sin and go back. He says to stay where you are. Don't go. There's another message that says you're going forward, going backward, or staying still. You need to not only stay still, but you need to be moving forward. Stand where you are. Don't give up to some things the enemy might throw in your face because he wants to discourage you and make you come back. And like I was minute, uh, that one service recently that I went to, Sister Mary had uh, ministered to some girls that committed su- wanted to commit suicide. Then the devil want to wipe them out. And then I spoke to him because the devil wants to destroy the young people or even destroy us. But we got to stand fast in the faith, stand fast in what he gives us. Once we know something, we're responsible and held accountable for it. And also we get strong by having fellowship. In Hebrews 10, 24 through 25, And let us consider how to stimulate one another in love and good deeds. 
not forsaking your assembly of together as the habit some, but encouraging one another in all the more as you see the day drawing near. All the more we need to fellowship with somebody to get our strength and encouragement because you stand alone with what's about to hit this nation, you're going to fall down. You need the strength with others. That's what that fellowshipping does. It gives you strength. You know somebody's praying for you. You know somebody's there. You know somebody that's going to stand on the truth just like you are. Because persecution's had in the United States like never before. It's already started. The laws are being passed just recently that you speak anything that's against the Muslim, against homosexuality, they can arrest you with no warrant. Nothing. They ought to destroy the works of God. And we need to stay strong and be in fellowship like Jim Baker says. He said, with this end time, we need to fellowship even more and stay strong together. We can do a work. And as you get together as a group, when disasters hit, which it will happen, we have work to do. We got people we can preach to. We got people we can help with food or clothing or, or help them in their situation because there'll be thousands yet to die in this nation. And lots of things that's going to happen. And people are thinking it's all happened elsewhere in the world. But God says, no, you have sinned too much. Judgment's about to come to the house of God, to the door. We've got to be in fellowships, being strong. Having that fellowship will give us strong. And then when we do go out, you know, okay, I know somebody else that believes the same thing, so I'm okay. I, can, I, I know it's there. I know I'm saying it's true. We need to get filled with all knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of God through the word. Galat Colossians, I mean, 1, 10, 9 through 12. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Scripture says every time you get, you ask for wisdom, he says get the understanding with it. Because you can get wisdom and just go gung-ho with that wisdom, but that was maybe what he meant to use it for. So that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects. Please him 24-7 in every moment of your life. Bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthening with all power according to his glorious might, for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience, joyously giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share the inheritance of the saints in light. Get filled with as much as we can with him. And understand everything that he has for us to understand. And of course, back to that Philippians for the next one, Philippians 4.13, to realize that you're stronger than the enemy. So many, I've, I've run across a lot of people that they might see the enemy out there, but they have no strength. They, the problem is they don't, in their mindset is like, I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. I, I, I'm not made to do that. I, you know, God told everyone to cast out demons. He told everyone to win souls. He told everyone to heal the sick. He told everyone to raise the dead. He said, do all the works that I did, and then some. So we all have that ability. We all have, because Jesus lives in us, that Holy Spirit working through us is the power and might for strength. This is the last one for sure, but in this list, but this is the most important that I tell people, I said, if you want to get somewhere, if you want to do what he says do, if you want to get, have anything and have that power, that strength that can move mountains. Jesus said, your prayers and that, you can move mountains. That strength to move back the dark clouds in your community is by getting the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have it, to go after it. And even when you do have it, to get more of it. Because Paul says, I wish that you spoke more tongues, more things. Really get deep in it. It would give you so much strength because it's through that Holy Spirit. It's through what he is and his characteristic of who he is that we're able to 
do spiritual warfare, that we're able to come against the enemy, that we're able to do everything that we need to, as humans cannot do. It's through him and through his strength and his power and abilities. There's so many things that we can do that make us strong, but we need to seek his face and get into his word and, and prayer. And I find even for me, and it's, I encourage it, I know uh, you have to be careful how you do that, but this, what the Jewish people actually did is called rava, is soaking. It is actually spending in his presence, hearing God. And I learned from my grandfather that even th nat natural things and things around you, because my grandfather, he, he, would, he wouldn't hear anything but what God would say, and he taught me, he says, you can shut the world out. And through that getting in his presence, that's where you get revelations. That's where you get strength. That's where you get the power of the Holy Spirit. That's where you get, uh, you see things. You can, and it's because you're worshiping him. You're getting in his presence and going into the inner chamber, going into the inner works of what God has, and you can get strong through him. Just like in our body, we need uh, different varieties of foods and things to get us physically strong, different vitamins, minerals, and all these things. We also need different things out of the word of God, different things that he shows us that will get us strong. And every time you study a scripture, the same scripture could be differently because God's got it differently for you for that time period. And then something to think about. The word of God abides in you and you are overcome the wicked one. When that word is abiding in you, you know that word. I've told people many times, when you know the word, you can speak the word and he shuts up. He will step down. He will be quiet. It'll, the word, scripture says it's Jesus. The word is Jesus. You speak him, it, it is powerful. It's stronger than our, only, our own thoughts and our own words that we could say. Do not love the world or the things of the world. We can't. We got, we're sep he says you're, he, you're particular people. You're set apart to do a work. But Jesus said before he left, he said the most important thing because of what is about to happen, because of the future, he says there's so many things up on. He told the disciples, he says, make sure you are aware. Watch, be aware of your surroundings because if you don't know the tactics of the enemy, how are you going to fight the enemy for war? And definitely pray. He says to watch out for what the enemy has out there and then pray. The most important thing you can ever do is to be in prayer. Pray. Pray without ceasing. Pray while you're doing dishes, if you do dishes. Pray while you're singing. Pray while you're uh, sweeping. Pray while you're working. Wh wh while you're doing everything. Praying at all times. Having your mind on prayer. Or every time God gives you something to pray for, to right away speak it up and start praying for it. And to pray against the Spirit. And pray against the enemy. It's the biggest battle of the strength that we could ever have. We can do great exploits for God when we pray. Because through, there's communication. There's another, it's really another lesson, really. Because it's, you get communication. You get strength. You get, you just know, get to know what he wants. And the last scripture. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord and be empowered. This is amplified. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. See? I find, Paul says, I, in the end, he says, it's more important to be strong in God or to be empowered through your union with him. See, we're not on our own, cannot. It goes right back to the Philippians 3, 4th chapter, that through Christ he gives us strength. It, we can't do it on our own. Through the union with Christ, draw your strength from him. Draw it from God. Draw it from him. That strength which his boundless might provides. It's not the strength that we can physically as men or even women that can lift weights and do all these things physically. It's a strength that is stronger and spiritually to where you're so anointed that Moses did with the rod that the sea parted. Doing the works of God. Doing what you tell you to do. We, all, we can only do those things through Christ. And through him of what he done. 